Good afternoon. I spent a great afternoon in Sweeney, Texas with several other candidates. We did a lit drop. We uh, registered some voters in the Stewart's parking lot. Had a great time. It was a little bit warm. It's officially the middle of summer. I'll tell you why it's officially the middle of summer. <clears throat> my mirror in my truck fell off the windshield again. It happens every summer about the same time. So, the good news is we're halfway through. <clears throat> if you don't know, I'm Patrick Henry, and I'm running for House District 25 State Rep. <clears throat> I'm wearing Terrence Norman's shirt tonight to give him a little plug, and because I sweat through my Patrick Henry shirt uh, earlier today. All right. Our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, our fellow Americans are in financial trouble. Many have lost their jobs and for the first time in their lives are facing the reality that they may be homeless. Luckily, to this point, most have been able to survive on their unemployment benefits and the $600 a week that the CARES Act provided. The Congress passed the HEROES Act to extend those benefits and increased benefits to schools back in May. They handed it off to the Senate. The Senate's less gen generous version is HEALS, H-E-A-L-S. And that was still up for debate Friday when the $600 a week benefit ended and they went home for a three-day weekend. Now, to be fair, some of them did stay over the weekend to try and work out a compromise or a deal, and that amounted to nothing. They're very far apart in the Senate on versions of an act to send back to Congress to come to an agreement to help the American people. Over 3 million Texans have filed for unemployment from mid-March until mid-July. In the U.S., there were another 1.4 million new claims last week. COBRA Extended Insurance is running out for some of those workers, adding to an unconscionable number of uninsured Texans, while COVID-19 lurks all around us. Varying sources estimate between 4.3 and 5 million Texans have no medical insurance. About 32,000 of those are in House District 25. That's more than the entire population of Lake Jackson. Can you visualize that? So, into this dire mix come complaints that Texans won't go back to work because they're making more money on unemployment than they were working their jobs. Let's examine that. How much can my lazy butt make on unemployment? Well, the average unemployment check is $246 per week or $1,000 per month. The maximum is $521 per week or $2,100 a month. Okay, about that rent. If you can find a place for $1,000 a month, you just went hungry, or you have a whopping $1,100 to cover those other bills you had. I'm sorry, you have children? These are people, ladies and gentlemen, with families that are now facing living on the amounts I just mentioned, the $600 a week per person has kept them afloat the last few months. The Senate says that $600 is going to keep people from going back to work. The Republicans are offering a whopping $200 a week. Here's the thing. If you add the $600, do you know what that works per hour? It's an astounding $15 per hour. So the complaining employer wants you to come back to work, risk COVID with no insurance, 
and work for less than $15 per hour. Let's be honest about what this reveals. An abysmal current minimum wage, a lack of health care, and a population taking the hardest hit by layoffs and COVID. We're about to be photobombed by a cat. So let's put this in the context of House District 25. The United Way, Alice Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed Assessment states that about $60,000 was needed by a family of four to cling to the middle class dream of having a house, insurance, a car, a phone, and the basics. That amounts to one $30 an hour job or two $15 an hour jobs. What's that you say? Find something new. Even if the training for a better job is free, the lost income during the training and the child care isn't. $7.25 an hour isn't going to cut it. Some say raising the minimum wage is socialism. But today, right now, we are paying for food stamps, and health care from the government to make up for what these businesses are not paying their workers. Why is one labeled as socialism and the other is not? I think that the small government crowd should be in favor of putting the money in the workers' hands instead of big government programs. Right now, we are paying for the uninsured people's health care. Remember, that's 32000 in HD 25. And we're paying for it in the most inefficient way possible. Through the emergency room at your tax-supported hospital. Rest assured, these people didn't go to the emergency room until they were really good and sick. We, the taxpayers, will pick up the tab that is left unpaid. We're paying the employer's tab once again. What's that? Don't blame the employer? Okay. I think you just asked for more socialism. So who has hit the hardest? The 22% of House District 25 families that were making under $25,000 per year. The working poor. The 60 to 70% of our students listed as economically disadvantaged and people of color. Multi-generational families living in cramped quarters suffer more from COVID. People without a personal care physician, insurance, and regular health care, and the resulting ill health suffer more from COVID. I can get tested today and have my results tomorrow. And I have done this twice. I don't have to wait hours and days. I have the privilege of insurance, a doctor I've used for 25 years, and a local testing site. So what can I do as your state representative? From day one, we will demand Medicaid extension that Texas turned down in 2012. It's estimated that over a 10-year period, this declining to participate will and has cost Texas $100 billion. And that's not to mention the suffering that can't be quantified by money. Then we will call for an increase in the minimum wage in Texas, putting money in workers' hands and freeing them from reliance on expensive big government programs. We have less than 90 days until early voting starts. I need you to do more than agree with me to say, good job, Patrick, what a wonderful post. I need your money, your labor, your help, and your yard or a fence for a sign. 
I need you phone banking, postcard writing, block walking, and a host of other jobs. Don't like the heat? You can use a phone. Like some exercise? You can do a lit drop. We've got something for everybody. Please contact me. In closing, let us all work to help our neighbors who are in dire straits. Yes, we need thoughts and prayers, but more importantly, we need action. We need you. If we work and we vote, we win. So mask up, rise up, put on your work boots, let's get this done.